Trevor, sure. I would say at the beginning of the year, you mentioned that last season with the concussions was probably the most difficult career or season in your career. Just how proud are you of the fact that you're able to bounce back, kind of shatter your career high in goals and have such a good season with this league? I think, uh, you know, it meant a lot to play 82 games last or this year. Um, and then, you know, obviously individual stuff. Uh, was was great to see the puck go in early and kind of build that confidence uh, after last year. So it was good for sure. Jeff, can we expect thirty goals from you every year now? Uh, I'll have to take it game by game. I don't know if I can call any guarantees for that kind of stuff, but uh, you know, it was it was really cool and you know, hopefully do it again. Have you guys received calls from Team USA for the World Championships, Trevor? Yeah, uh, I'm not gonna go though. Yeah, uh, I haven't heard anything yet. No. Like you hit in game five, what happened there? Uh, I was I was behind Kopi, so I didn't see anything really coming, and then just got uh, got hit. But uh, the spotters made me do a concussion test, so that's why I was gone for for so long. But just uh, wind knocked out of me and a little dinged up. But that uh, it took so long just because we had to do uh, the process to to make sure everything was good. And you're physically okay going into the postseason. Yeah, no, no difference than everyone else. Couple bumps, bruises, but yeah, felt felt fine for the most part. Yeah. Same thing for you, Trev. Yeah, pretty, solid. yeah, pretty solid. Guys, what's the next step for this team to, to get to take the next step? Uh, I mean, I feel like we've you know been same spot here three years in a row where it's taken the next step and we kind of stay in the same spot. Um, I don't know if there's you know one set thing. Obviously, it's trying to, to keep getting better as a group. Um, I feel like we might, you know, take step forward certain ways and uh, same time maybe we give up a little bit. Consistency, I think we can be a little more dialed in. But, uh, yeah, I, don't, I mean, we wanted to fix the penalty kill for the regular year, fixed it uh, during the, the regular season. Obviously, we didn't come through when we needed to in, in the playoffs. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know if there's, like, one, one set fix to, to go next step. But... Just try and, try and keep getting better. Yeah, I was going to kind of say the same thing. I think that just, you know, we improved the penalty kill so much, um, which is a big f factor for us. And then, you know, kind of the same problems in the playoffs that we've had the last couple of years. We play them well five on five and then just kind of get killed in the special team. So, um, you know, obviously you have to sort that out. We, we thought we had and, and we didn't. But, um, you know, as a group, we just got to, you know, maintain that consistency, keep getting better. It seemed like before this season, things were kind of in a linear direction. Now everything's on the table. You made a coaching change. You may make another coaching change. Management coming to the end of a contract. Discussion there. Discussion about system in this very room, the one three one. If it stays or if it goes. But all this kind of uncertainty. Uh, I mean, is there concern? Is there excitement about possibility? Uh, what are you guys looking at when you look ahead? Yeah, I don't know. I, I think maybe a little bit concerned because you're not sure what's you know what's really going to happen um, but overall I think for myself I just worry about my summer and my training program and, and bringing my best possible uh, self to training camp and then go from there um, you know the rest of the self will get sorted out. Yeah it, I mean there's only so much we can control um, at least for now we we have you know a fair amount of guys that are signed here for next couple of years however long so um, like he said, all all we do now is uh, we worry about you know your individual self, making sure you're you're coming to camp ready to go. Um, you know everything else will fall where it falls, and that's again not really our job to um, be in charge of that. So we take care of what we do, and then you know as players we come ready to go. Um, and you know whoever's there, whatever we're doing, whatever system we play is what they tell us to do, and, and we go from there. Do you, do you feel that you're both of you because you? Had success and been here, you know, watching this team grow. I mean, both feel maybe that you're taking a step forward in terms of the leadership of this team. You know, coming into the, the next season, especially with some of the young guys who you know, can maybe in this lineup. Are you are you in that position to be part of that next wave of leadership here? I mean, I I think so. I think like you said, with just the younger guys coming in, you're. We're transitioning to that age, myself especially. Um, Mikey's a little younger than me, but um, you know I'm getting uh, you know a little older, and guys are coming in 20 years old, and um, you know hopefully I can you know lead by example at least for them, and, and 
be a good uh, example of what to do in the off season and how to you know take care of yourself. Kind of like you know how we look at Louie and just how he does things all the time and and you know hopefully I'm leading that way. Speaking of <coughs> some of some of those young guys that uh, you know are coming in, safe to say someone like Alex Laferriere was a bit of a surprise in, in, in sticking with you guys all year. He's got a future, obviously. Um, and then you've got, you know, you had players with uh, like Alex Turcotte, Akil Thomas at the very end, um, Frank Clark, obviously. How much would you like to see them get longer looks, get more, you know, we woven into this fabric here, you know, going forward? Just, you know, maybe not necessarily new blood, but younger blood. Yeah, I mean, they all what had their t times and they all played well obviously Turk was with us for the while and he was playing really good before he got hurt um Keel had the same thing um you know Clarky they uh they bring a lot of energy which is fun obviously they're not a whole lot younger than me um but still the way they come to the rink they you know they see life different from the older guys that we look to as leaders. So maybe like Trevor was saying, they look to us to kind of learn the way. Well, we're learning from, from the other guys still. Um, but they're they're awesome to have around the rink with uh, the energy they bring. You know, they play almost fearless. They seem to to do stuff maybe you, you wouldn't think about trying. But, uh, yeah, obviously if they're around, it's, it's fun to have um, younger life guys kind of pull for them. You want to see them, you know, have success and try and, try and pave their way. So... Um, it's it's nice when when they get it coming and they can contribute. Is it necessary for you guys as as an evolving <coughs> unit? Is it necessary to inject more more of that younger blood? I think yeah. I think it's good for every team. Like you, I mean, you if you're gonna win, you got to have you know some of those younger guys. Um, you know, sometimes it's harder for you know cap situations to get all veteran teams and whatever but you know I feel like it's important having young guys um, it, it creates a good dynamic through the room and hopefully those guys then stay and they can carry on whatever you know the old guys put in place and the standard they set um, it's I think it's just good to have young guys to to learn from the older guys and try and um, you know carry along how you want an organization uh, run. Why don't you talk to Adrian and Kevin both of them mentioned they Possibly interested in a change of systems with one through one, maybe get more aggressive on the four check, less stationary on breakouts. But from a defenseman standpoint, what would your thoughts be on a change of system, or do you kind of like sticking with that one through one? Yeah, I mean, it, obviously we we go out there and play, so we're doing what they tell us to do. Um, ever since I've been here, that's been what we've what we've done. So it almost feels kind of second nature um, to what we do. Um, but obviously, it's. You know, I think there's times where it's been great. There's other times when maybe we could be, you know, feel like we need to push forward a little bit more and, I don't know, maybe be more aggressive uh, throughout a game. But uh, obviously that's that's not uh, for us to, to decide. But, uh, I mean, I think everyone, you know, sees it differently. It's, like I said, some, some games it's awesome. Some games I feel like we could maybe, you know, need a little change. Teams can figure out how to get through it makes it tough. But... Um, sometimes it, it makes it a little easier, but yeah, we'll see. The younger players, you talked about that fearlessness, Mikey. With, with Brant in particular, I think we saw that in the second call up. A uh, you know, guy who wants the big spot, the big shift. Uh, do you think he's a guy who could have helped you in the playoffs? And what are you looking for out of him as a more regular contributor next season, most likely? Yeah, uh, like you said, he, he plays fearless. There's some stuff he does, uh, especially if he's got like the puck at the blue line. You, you know, I sit there and clench up a little bit on the bench because you don't know what's going to happen, but he finds a way to pull it off. Um, but that's, again, that's kind of the way he plays. I, obviously, I wasn't around Drew when, when he was that uh, young, but apparently he has similarities to like that where they were both kind of uh, all over the place, um, but find a way to be effective. And, uh, yeah, I think, I mean, uh, offensively he's, you know, super gifted and talented, so I think he's uh, – He's a piece going forward that can help bring a little more offense for, for the blue line. Um, I think he's still, you know, rounding out his game defensively. Um, obviously, he's working with Hyder um, in Ontario, and he's he's awesome to learn from. So um, I think everyone, you know, should should be excited for him uh, in the future because I, I think he'll be a, a big part for the team going forward. Kind of piggybacking off of the uh, comments Kevin and uh, Adrian made on the one three one, and switching to a one two two. They said it was more fun for forward to be on the forecheck. 
do you kind of share those same thoughts? Yeah, I think, um, I don't know, I personally think the one three one gets a little bit of a bad rap. I, I think a lot of teams do it. Um, it looks maybe a little bit different than ours. I, I mean, there's a lot of variations of it, too. I think I think Tampa does, like, a one one three, right? Yeah, and Rangers are Rangers the same thing. Yeah. Like, like, there's a lot of teams who are doing it. Um, <clears throat> maybe we get in it more than other teams, but I would like to see maybe a, a variation, right, where it's like, this team's doing this, maybe we get into a one two two tonight. I think we started doing that a little bit more toward the end of the season. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I, I think I think that would be a good option, but I don't hate the one three one. I think that maybe we just got into it a little bit too much. Matt, when you look at the – until you guys clinched your spot there, get a playoff spot, and then having the last handful of games against non-playoff teams, do you think that guy got you guys out of your rhythm a little bit? Maybe the desperation and urgency or something? I mean, maybe, but it still felt like we were playing for, you know, for seeding, and, you know, we were trying to make the playoffs there, trying to clinch. Uh, but, you know, you can't control those things, and I... I thought that we did a pretty good job, and I felt ready going into the playoffs. I think that a lot of us felt like we were we were ready to go. Sure, your family grew this year. It's the first year of your new contract. Nick Nixon gives you a new nickname. Are those sorts of things, that kind of additional pressure, is that helpful for you to have that year that you have this year? Um, as far as, like, having a family? Like, yeah, well, just all of it. Just yeah, the changes in your life. I mean, I thought <clears throat> maybe I expected it to be a little harder than it was. I think that coming home to, you know, my wife and my son every day was, you know, such a blessing to get away from the rink and go to the park and do those things outside of hockey. Um, but I think this year I kind of committed to just having fun and enjoying enjoying all of it. Um, I think that was a big thing for me. So uh, I didn't feel a whole lot of pressure all year, honestly. I was, if things didn't go great, it was just, just turn the page and move on to the next game. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, it was a good year from that standpoint. Is this team good enough to go deep in the playoffs? Would a different system or coach get it out of you, or do you need more impact players? I mean, I think we we've talked about it throughout the year. We I I firmly believe we got we got the right pieces. Um, obviously, you know, stuff happens where you maybe change guy here or there, but. Um, I thought we we have a group of guys that uh, you know guys bring different skill sets. Guys kind of mesh well together. It seems like we got a great group of guys that love being together. Um, and I thought throughout the year we had times you know against top teams where we play with them. Obviously you know we haven't shown anything in the playoffs of us you know being at the level that some of those teams might be at. But um, again, I, we're we're still learning as some of the younger guys. I, now with what that's three three years of, of playoffs obviously it hasn't gone our way um, at all but um, I think we got a good group I think it's just you know making sure that when it you know comes to it we get the effort consistently and we we play like we need to 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 win the games that matter. For both of you guys jumping off of Daryl's question about the schedule at the end of the year after those last couple games Jim had mentioned a few times that he didn't like the intensity it wasn't there enough but he was adamant that once the playoffs come, you guys will be able to flip a switch and it will all be there. Is that maybe some things you guys need to work on going forward that it might be too hard to just flip a switch like that going into the playoffs and kind of find that in those last couple games? Yeah, I think it was <clears throat> a lot of the year for us, honestly, just consistency. Um, I think that was a big thing for us. Like Mikey said, at points, you know, we believe, in our, we believe in our group, and I think that at points you saw that we could compete with anyone, best teams in the league, and then sometimes we would just – Weren't, weren't there as much so um, yeah I mean the schedule is a little softer but I don't think anyone was taking it lighter it's just we just had back in the I mean you saw it in the playoffs we had some games like game four where we were the better team um, I thought and then some games where we kind of got you know run out of the building a little bit so um, yeah I think just you know finding that consistency is huge. Is finding that consistency a team wide thing or is that kind of individuals need to find it and mentality switch what's maybe the problem there? I, I felt like it was Pretty team wide, we were just kind of out of sync, uh, out of sync on breakouts. Um, you know, disconnect between forwards and D on the tracking and the gaps and stuff felt, uh, you know, bad at times. Just stuff like that. For either one of you guys, um, was it tough to, whether it was February or especially March as you got around the deadline, was it tough to see and seeing those other West teams that you compete with make significant moves and know that were largely unable to counter or make similar 
type of moves like that to, to bring in an impact player or two? I mean, I feel like any team you want, if you can bring in anyone to help out, no one's ever going to say no. But also, I think we talked about it. We, we like the group we have. Um, obviously, there wasn't much we could do as far as uh, moves go with, you know, the cap, different injuries and everything. We were pretty pressed. So, again, it's not our job to, you know, make those moves. But, again, um, you know, they, they make the moves for their team that they feel is right. Obviously, if there's something that needed to be done, um, that's, you know, Blakey's call or anyone upstairs, whatever they see fit. But, um, I mean, I still thought we, we had belief in our group and, and what we could do uh, together. And uh, just unfortunate we, we weren't able to, to do it. Yeah, it also felt like, I know we said this a bunch, um, but it felt like we got Arby at the deadline. Like, yeah. our Arby was a big addition for us, and we felt good about that. But definitely seeing other teams go making big, make big moves. Um, it's obviously exciting and stuff. Uh, but, you know, we felt good about it.